Hi guys, welcome to Missy's Imaginings. Oh my goodness, it's been a bit, so welcome. And uh, it is a probably midday on a Saturday. So uh, we did have some overtime yesterday. And then it was one of my daughter's birthdays. So we did some birthday things. And so I thought I need to get some things done and get some things recorded so that we can move on with some projects. But... <laughs> If you've been watching the channel a while, you know that I have a weakness. Well, several. <laughs> and one of them is for doll storage. And so I saw this and I thought it is so adorable. It is the My Life brand, which you can get at Walmart. And it is the like an 18 inch doll wardrobe and I thought it was so cute so in this particular one I found it online and the price was a little bit higher than what you'd pay in the store but it probably included shipping as well because the shipping was free um, so it was totally uh, reasonable in the expense because it is a big package to have to ship so totally uh, okay with that but I did notice when I was in the store that the ones in the store currently that I saw uh, yesterday have five hangers where this has two hangers but this one includes ice cream cone hamper isn't that the cutest thing ever so the one in the store did not have this it only had the five hangers and um, you know, I mean, I have lots of hangers, so the hangers isn't a big deal to me, but I love this. I think it's so cute. A little hamper that looks like a woven ice cream cone. So cute. And then the drawers um, are a decent size. So this, uh, as far as I know, this product is currently available in Walmart for about $20, maybe a little give or take. It has the three shelves here, three drawers, a closet rod, then little wheels on the bottom that don't actually turn, but it lifts it up off the ground. Then on one end, let's see, it has just a little um, hanging uh, organizer with pockets, which is cute. Then on the back side, it does have three little hanging pegs, so you can hang things up on the back. And then on this end, it's a mirror. So there you can see out the window and the camera and all that good stuff. <laughs> but there we go. So it's just super cute. So I thought, I, I don't need this. But it just makes me happy. So I went ahead and got it. And then, I'll oh, stick this back up here. Um, but as you can tell, I mean, I have the Tonner case back here. Um, I have another Tonner case for the 16 inch uh, Tyler Wentworth line size doll. Um, it has kind of retro designs. I don't think I have the cup with me right now. But um, so I have that one. I also have one for Tiny Kitty. I have a, a trunk for Betsy McCall, the Tiny Betsy. Um, I have a trunk that's not by Tonner, but it fits the 14 inch Betsy McCall. <laughs> and then uh, you've probably seen the video. I also have the Evangeline Gasly trunk, which I just love. So I have this weakness for doll storage and clothing organization. And so when I saw this, I thought, oh, that is so cute. I'm going to get one of these. <laughs> that's not the end of my madness so stay tuned I also <laughs> found a and I don't remember the name of it it is for the American girl so it will fit like up to third scale roughly dolls but it's the great big trunk that opens up like a wardrobe and it has the the trundle bed that folds down and I saw it and it did have shipping but the price was like around, I think it was 79 or $80 for the actual trunk, which I've never seen one for that amount. And then the shipping included, 
because it's a big heavy wooden trunk um, so it took it up but still the price that I paid with the price and the shipping combined was still less than all the listings um, just their basic price except for one that was about $20 less but that one was like $20 less than my total price but it also included over a hundred dollars shipping so it would have doubled the price so they're super expensive um, but I found it and I'll do a separate video on opening that um, just because it'll take a while but <laughs> I don't need any of this but I love doll storage I love trunks I love cases I love being able to organize things so this was really cute um, just some ribbon in here for now and this little bumblebee pin will be featured on our project for today so I have this handy and then the other thing that I've I've been getting is molds for resin projects that I want to work on so if you're interested in that um, you can leave a note in the comments below there is so much available on YouTube about working with resin and I am a novice I am not an expert at all um, I'm just getting started but there were some things I wanted to try so if you want to watch someone who knows nothing <laughs> to attempt some work in resin you can let me know but if you want really good tutorials and tips um, there's a lot on YouTube you can look at and follow um, because I will be doing that as well for tips but I do have molds for uh, keychain jewelry things um, dominoes which I thought would be fun for Christmas gifts and then I don't know if it'll show up but these are a set of alphabet letters for keychains which I thought would be really fun to do so I've been getting ready to start some of that and um, so if you'd like to watch on that journey of exploration I'll say um, just let me know because like I say I know nothing as far as expertise um, I do know what I've learned as I've tried um, some resin eyeballs for BJD's and that has been a lot of fun I've enjoyed that and kind of learned a few little things but I'm not an expert so um, also the only resin I've used is ready-made UV cure resin so I have not mixed the two uh, components together to create the resin mixture um, as far as you know ways to avoid bubbling and all that I don't know I haven't done that so just be prepared if you watch any of my stuff I don't do any of that nor do I know how to do it and um, that would be learning online <laughs> as you watch me make mistakes so that being said we have this little guy which I just love and I'm so glad it arrived safely so I will be leaving good feedback. I did get this on eBay. Um, someone did ask in the comments uh, what secondhand places I shop, and most of it is on eBay. I have purchased a couple things from people that I already know on Facebook, or I already know them from Facebook, and then they list on eBay, and I've purchased that way, but it was anything through Facebook has been with people that I already have a rapport with and a friendship with um, so I don't do a lot of shopping from strangers on Facebook so I, I can't speak to that I do uh, shop a lot on eBay I always uh, read over the feedback ratings and take that into account I will say this when you're shopping on eBay if you look through the comments I don't just look through the feedback score I actually look through the comments and I will search out negative comments because I want to know what they're saying and so I weigh all that when I'm going to purchase something so if someone has maybe a 99 uh, feedback score or even a 98 feedback score and I look through their scoring and everything has been perfect except one person who's complaining because when you have a low seller rating like you're just getting started one complaint can really throw off the curve on the feedback and so 
I'll look at that complaint and I'll say, well, what is it they're complaining about? The packaging was all rumpled. The, it was fine, but the packaging was a mess. Well, you know, you can't really control what happens to things once they're in, in the post. You, you're, it's out of your hands at that point. Um, so I will look over that before I make a decision to buy from any particular seller. So if someone has a lower feedback score than 100, I look at what is being commented what is the complaint uh, versus what all the com all the feedback score is? So that's just my hint on when you're shopping on eBay. Um, anytime there's been a couple times when I've actually made purchases that were from a fraudulent seller, eBay was always quick to refund my money, and I was disappointed I didn't get the product. But uh, eBay took care of that. So um, just those. Uh, tips and tricks if you're going to shop on eBay. Also, I do very specific searches for what I want. Um, I will type in different variations of, like for the trunk that I bought, or this, uh, one-third scale doll trunk, or American Girl doll trunk, or doll wardrobe, doll closet. I'll do several different searches specifically to see what is available because people have different words in their titles and so that helps get like an overall picture of what's available. Um, so hopefully that can help if you're shopping on eBay. Also know that from a seller's perspective, uh, eBay is adding more and more charges to how they figure up what their cut is and I remember being a little annoyed that they decided that the total price is what they take their cut off, not just the selling price, but they include the shipping charges as part of your selling price. So if I'm only charging what the post office charges, eBay is still taking a cut out of that. So if people have higher shipping costs, that's why, because eBay is taking a cut out of our shipping costs. So just some things to factor in if you're shopping on eBay. I will say um, I have had some fun at thrift stores um, such as St. Vincent de Paul or Goodwill, um, garage sales, real um, estate sales. Sometimes you can find a lot of fun things. So there's a lot of different venues for secondhand. And um, reading listings carefully can also make a difference. Um, the one doll I have, um, I will go ahead and edit out jumping up from here, but I'll bring her and show her. So let's see, I'm not sure how tall my camera is, so we'll take her off and lower her down a little bit. This is a one-third scale Island Doll Ada. Right now, I believe she's still on their website. She is a little over $400, I believe. Um, Island Doll Resin is very heavy duty resin. For some reason, my camera stopped recording while I was demonstrating uh, what was going on in this doll's head. But uh, I have a couple of photos here. So essentially, she was advertised with something wrong with her head and it was crooked. And that's why she was listed at a really low price. But I thought, well, with the ball jointed doll, I could probably fix that. And I went ahead and bid on her, and no one else did. And so I think I got her for like $125 or $135, something around there. And so I bought her, and when she got to me, and I opened her up, I was a little apprehensive on, you know, what did I just walk myself into? But... When I looked inside her head, the only thing I had to do was to lift the C-hook up and turn it so that it would fit into the little sideways slots and anchor it in her head. It had just come undone, and so it was slipping down um, into the slot so that you could take the head off. It would just lift you know, up over the C-hook. So yeah, that's all I had to do was to pull and twist, and then she was fine. So I was so excited to get her um, because she is about a $400 doll, I believe. And then, yeah, I got her for like $125, $135. So yeah, 
it's really fun when you can find those amazing deals. As you can see, we have red, orange, yellow outfits complete. So next we're going to be working on the green outfit for V. So let's sew. Here are the pieces um, we need for our project. So I'll probably, oh, the dogs are going crazy next door. Just in case you hear wild noises, we are in the middle of a thunderstorm. Uh, it kind of rolled over the top of us while I was getting everything switched over to the machine. Um, so yeah, so if you hear some big rumbling noises or the dogs next door going crazy, <laughs> that's why. So, okay, we'll move on. <laughs> For the shirt and the pants, they it is a long sleeve shirt that will have uh, the collar, then cuffs on the sleeves. Um, it has the back facing, the front facing, and the front and the back. There's no real special pleating or anything involved in this particular shirt. The cuffs will be put on just like we did the cuffs on um, Yungi's orange jacket, like shirt style jacket. So the shirt I probably won't show sewing all the pieces. Um, there's several videos already on the website for sewing uh, a button-up shirt and then also it's very similar to the way we did Yungi's coat. So it would just be a lot of redundancy there. Also the pants for Tay's outfit are black and um, I'll have to compare to the pattern so I know which exact set this is, but it's just going to be the same uh, as far as assembly as all the other pants. So we're going to take a look at the coat because the coat might have some steps that are actually different <laughs> from what we've shown in other videos. So uh, the first thing we'll look at is um, just basic prep sewing. Of course we have the collar that is shaped slightly different. It's got a little bit more curvature. Then we'll do right sides together, go up the side, across the top, back down, uh, trim the seam allowance, flip it right side out, and then stay stitch the bottom together. The back does have an open uh, pleat or vent in the back. So when we sew that together, um, we'll be sewing on this line and it does have just some gathered, uh, not quite a V-shaped dart, but a gathered piece so it will look like this. So we will be sewing that. Then on the back, it's going to have some open pleating in the back. So we'll take a look at how we're going to do that. So that will be a little bit different than other things we've done. So to put the back together, um, it will have a little bit of special instruction. And then the sleeves are also going to have some of that open pleating um, in the back. So that will be a little bit different as well because it's going to have a look kind of like this on the edge of the sleeve. So there are some differences in this jacket that um, make it worth looking at the how-tos of putting it together. And then I did want to try something new for my lapel. Um, when the garment is finished, uh, of course right sides are together, we flip it out, but the lapel that shows on like a sport coat type jacket, when the lapel uh, flips out. The part that you see is actually the facing. And so when we do this, I want to be able, and let's see, I have to think of when the jacket is on, be this side of the jacket. So here we go. And I'll check photos just to double check my reference, but I believe I want it on this lapel. So on the coat, I want to be able to have our bumblebee and let's see, let's go ahead and cut this, shall we? I love this little bee. <laughs> I think it's so cute. All right, see, and I think it's over. There we go. Oh, let's see how it's going to look on the, isn't that cute? 
So it is a pin that opens, let's see if I can get my little thing to flip out. There we go. So here's the actual pin, kind of like a stinger. Ta -da! And so this little pin uh, then has a clasp here. So it's just the common type of little brooch pin. So I'm going to add something in this lapel so that the little bee can rest on here, but I won't have to pin the, the bee to the actual garment. And what I'm going to try, I've never done this before, but we're going to try. I'm going to use some of this Doris um, metallic cording. It's designed for plastic canvas crafts. Um, I usually use this cording um, as the, the material I use when I'm putting together uh, doll trunks and I use it to lace up the hinges. I guess I could just tear that off. And so it's a nice heavy cord um, and it doesn't unravel super easy and when you tie it because of the texture uh, in my opinion anyway, it can hold a really good tight knot, but also it can be undone if you need to. Um, so I really like this. I've tried other different kinds of materials for cording, for putting my trunks together, and this just happens to be uh, the kind that I like best. And so I found a seller, here again it was on eBay, <laughs> that was selling a whole bunch. So I just bought the lot. And I think my idea is to use uh, this cording because I got lots and lots of colors and I found one that actually matches our coat color really well. And what I want to do is if I take this and turn it out. Before I start sewing this together, I want to insert this vinyl. I'm grabbing a needle here that hopefully I can thread. So here we go. So now I have this cording. So I'm going to imagine where I want the little bee on my lapel. And remember, you have to take into account there's going to be seam allowances that will be a quarter inch here and a quarter inch here. So I'd want my little bee to rest about here. Yeah, about there. And I'm going to make a very tiny little dot at both edges of where the pin would rest. Let's see if we turn it back. Do we want it in that far? Ooh. Okay. There. And here. Okay. So now, one I'll have to clean off. I'm going to Um, let's see, I'll probably come up right about here, bring it through, and then I'm going to go back in and then make sure there's just a little bit of a loop there. And then I'll tie it off in the back. And here again, I don't want to be super tight. And I'm just going to do, let's see, I think I'll do a square knot here. And give that a tug. And then cut these down. So then, on the outside of my coat, I have this little loop. Now we'll use the other one. And 
and we'll do the same thing here. And we'll come up this way and then go back in. Oh, I'm throwing pens on the floor. All right, now we'll tie this off again. Once again, we'll do a square knot. Let's see, get this one. The bottom down a little bit more snug. Tie that off. And we'll snip that again. All right, so now with these two little loops, I can take the pin through that loop and then through this loop and then close it up. And that way, my little pin has something on which it can anchor, but I don't have to pin it in the vinyl every single time if I want to take it off and switch it out with something else. I could use another little pin as well. So anyway, that was just a little idea I had. So now we will remove our little pin um, so we can go ahead and get the jacket put together. And there we go. So anyway, that was my idea. So hopefully if you have some embellishments that you would like to add but be able to remove them, I love his little green eyeballs. I guess it's his eyeballs that are green, not the head. But they're so cute. And I thought with the green and yellow, this is going to look so good with this outfit because of the colors in the shirt. Isn't that fun? He's bzz, bzz, blends right in there. Okay. All right. So now we'll go ahead and look at putting together the coat. So prep sewing, of course, will be the collar. Then I do have just some fabric facing um, just to minimize the amount of uh, bulkiness in the jacket. So I will sew the facings and the back of the facing together at the shoulders. And I normally don't serge the edge of vinyl because it's not going to fray or anything. But I will be serging the edge of this piece probably before I sew it to the vinyl. That way this will have a finished edge on it. Then I will sew the, so that's the facing pieces. Now that I have my little bug part ready. Then on the back, we'll go ahead and look at uh, sewing the back together. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a quarter inch seam right along the edge of the back and then I will be sewing from the top down to this line and back tack. Then I will sew from this little mark down to where the pleat is and then I'll back tack on both ends of that. And then I will also sew these little markings here will be laid like this and sewn just back tack, sew and back tack. So it won't come all the way up to the fold. It will only be like a pinch that way. So it'll be open on the top and the bottom. So I'm going to do all that on the back. And then we'll take a look at how we put this down to make it lie nice and flat.
Now with all the seams done, I have a couple different sizes of turning sticks. So I'm not going to be using this part, but dependent on the size of my seam, sometimes it's easier to use a little tiny rod or sometimes the wooden one. But we'll start with the sleeve here. What we're going to do is insert the rod into the casing that's been made. And it's only at this top part and this top part. Then we're going to open up the sleeve like this. And we're going to lay it so that we can take this casing that we've made. Move it up here a little bit better. And the line in the center needs to stay in the center as you press it down. So let's see, we'll start up at the top here. And I'm just going to be sliding the stick out like so and pressing this down. And then I'm going to be holding this in place with that little line in the center. I flip it this way. There we go. We're going to hold it down. And here's where we can see that. And now that I have that held in place, I'm going to top stitch. I'm just checking my alignment down here. I'm going to top stitch right next to the seam and keep that in place. I'm going to stitch real close to the seam. And we're only going to come down to as far as it was sewn. And then we're going to turn. So I'm going to lift the foot. Turn. And my stitches are very tiny, so I can do two stitches. And I'm going to pivot again and come back up. Still staying real close to that seam. Take it out of the machine and trim our thread. Here we go. All right. Then we're going to repeat that process on the back, or on the back, on the bottom of the sleeve. So we're going to insert the dowel. So it's just easier to press this down if you have a dowel kind of separating the, the sides. Then we'll remove the dowel, the turning stick there. Now we'll flip it over, and again we're going to come from the end here. Stay really close to the seam. Just go up as far as that is sewn, and we'll pivot. Do two stitches. Pivot again, come back down, and pull it out of our machine here. All right, and I am um, getting my iron hot. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press this down again keeping everything together so that it's lined up so the pleat edges are together and sometimes if you kind of pull the ends away from each other it kind of helps it to lay in place a little bit better and I'm going to take this to the iron and be right back so I used the iron on the wrong side that's a fabric side just to kind of help and I'll probably do a little bit more but it kind of helps to lay in place but then my sleeve will have that inset pleat just on the edge by the elbow and of course it can open up when it's on the doll but it just is a design that's kind of fun to have something a little bit different in the makeup of your coat so I will go ahead and press that down again try to get this kind of melted because it is plastic <laughs> into place then I will hem the sleeve so that'll just be turned up and hemmed then um, I will do the same on the other sleeve and then on the coat back, we're going to do the same exact process. 
and then the pleat will be turned uh, so that it goes one direction. And then that will be top stitched um, on this part will be top stitched all the way down and this will be top stitched all the way down to the hem um, just to kind of help that stay in place. So this will be top stitched along the edge and then those will be top stitched exactly like we done on the sleeve and then this seam because this was two pieces um, because of the pleat in the back when we take this seam and flatten it with the dowel uh, you just have a little bit more than folding the rounded seam down because that will happen exactly the same but this seam allowance on the top will also be opened and that's what will create the line as far as your center it will be that open seam like see I took my dowel out too soon but it will lay like this and then that will be top stitched exactly the same but now we just have the part that makes the actual casing and then we have the seam allowance that has to lay flat. So the top stitching helps to keep that all nice and flat so it doesn't make a big bulge in your back. But So this will be uh, pressed down and then top stitch exactly the same way and then these little bits will use the really really thin little rod which I will find so I can insert that from the, the good side here Try not to scratch my vinyl, but then I can lay this down and just do a quick press right here as well, just to kind of help push that down. So that will be the back of the coat. We'll get that all pressed and top stitch into place, finish the other sleeve. Then I will be putting the fronts to the back at the shoulder. And then once the shoulders are connected, it will be time to put in the collar. So we'll get that much done and come back. I have the top section done here and then the mid section done. Now, in order to make my coat uh, pleat flaps go the right way, I need to alleviate some of this double fold bulk, which means I will be trimming this here and then trimming this here and then let's see I need this one to go fold all the way back with no pleat so I'm going to trim below the there we go this way so it won't fold back on itself and then this one will trim I'm just snipping back there we go and if you wanted it to be continually separated then you could but I don't want it to separate so I want one to lay over and one to fold back so I'm snipping across that bottom edge so then it will lay flat without all the double uh, pleat part and then I will fold it so that the inside the inside edge matches there we go now with this folded in place I'm going to top stitch just this side and meet up with this stitching here so that fold will be top stitched down so I'm staying very close to the edge I'm going to meet up with that stitching and take it out uh, down here at the bottom trim that one off Right, and then I'm going to pull the stitch to the inside if I can get it to lift I might have to use a needle to pop
pop it back down in there. So let's grab a needle. We'll thread our needle if I can see the eye of the needle. There we go. The camera is like in front of my face, so I have to make sure I can see. There we go. I'll take both of those threads to the inside, then I'll just tie them off. So I'll do a double loop here, and one more double loop here. Okay. Just trim away those threads. Now for, so there's the top stitching for this side. Then, I don't know that I necessarily need top stitching on the top, but I do want to connect those two seams so I don't just have a floating seam in the middle of the coat. So, I'm going to come to this seam and just go straight across. And here, I might need to adjust my lighting so I can see a little bit better. So, yeah, so I'll probably do this and then come back to the camera because the light in my machine burnt out. <laughs> so, I guess I could open that, might give a little more light. And um, I'll have to get my nose right in there so I can see. So, I'll be right back. Now that that part is done, and this is all finished off, I am going to take these two little flaps in the back and make sure that the edges are lined up and I'm going to sew the top of this just to keep it connected so that it won't separate and kind of hang in a floppy manner. So we're just going to take and sew across here. And then that can lay sideways. And here is the back of our coat. So that's all done and ready to connect at the shoulders. Uh, just a quick note, when you're pressing from the inside, anytime you have the good side of the vinyl exposed and you want to press, um, always put like a paper or cloth on top of that before you put your iron there because the iron will melt this uh, because it's plastic and it will melt and get on your iron and you don't want that on your iron so just if you're going to press the seam down and you have some of that um, make sure you cover that and then make sure when you're ironing you don't get up onto the portions above or below um, so that would get caught on your iron and only uh, keep the iron plate on the paper and that way you can press that down a little bit. Okay, so now we have the shoulders attached and top stitched and I did clip to what will be the seam line in the curves of the neckline and I also prepared the edges of my sleeve openings uh, with some little clips to uh, what will be the seam line and I have notched the center back on the collar and then also we have a seam to indicate the center back on the jacket so next I'm going to go ahead and line up the center back and then straighten this out and sew the collar into place first I'll baste along this very narrow edge and then once I have it basted into place and making sure that this edge on this lapel match the distance of the edge on this lapel to make sure they match uh, then I'll sew it on and then once it's tacked in place I will go ahead and lay the facing on so here's my facing with right sides together and I will stitch up the front on one side, then around the neck, and then back down 
the other side. But because this is all kind of slick and very thick, and you can't really pin it without leaving holes, I'm going to, uh, that's why I'm going to baste the collar in first. A lot of times I'll just sandwich it and pin it in place and sew it all at one time. But it's a little difficult on this kind of a textile, so I'll go ahead and text the collar in for, or baste the collar in first, and then I'll go ahead and add my facing in, and then we'll turn it right side out and take a look at where we are thus far. So now the front facing is on, the collar is in, and the facing will be tucked and sewn in at the shoulders once everything is being finished up. So right now it's still a little floppy. I did do extra clipping up inside so that it'll go around the curves a little bit better. And then once the sleeves are in and the sides are sewn, all of this will be top stitched as well as along the neck edge all the way around. So uh, yeah, that'll we'll go over that um, when we get there, but just know it looks a little puffy right now because that isn't done yet. Um, it's one of the finishing steps. So the next step is to put in the sleeves, and like most uh, of the other projects we do, we're going to take the sleeve, and it will be sewn right side to right side, and I will start... Um, I will baste the shoulder edge because it may be a little bit bigger than my opening, so I will baste it, and then I will start clipping uh, with like um, clamp clips, not uh, cutting because this is already snipped. But I will go ahead and clip this to the right sides together, starting at the outside of the arm, and then working up towards the shoulder so that any gathers that form will be up towards the shoulder rather than having any pleats or gathers under the arm. So we will go ahead and baste this and clip from the outside of the arm up to the top of the shoulder, then sew the sleeves in place. Once the sleeve is in, dun, 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 then we will turn it right side out. I guess I could turn it the correct way that it will be sewn. <laughs> So here we go. So then, with it inside out, I will sew from the edge of the sleeve up to the armpit and down the side. And then once that is done, I will probably open that seam and top stitch the side seams up almost to the armpit, just so it helps this seam allowance stay open a little bit easier. And then once the sleeves are all put in, then we'll do that finishing top stitching. So now the coat has the collar in and the sleeves in. There we go. And there's a little bit of pucker there, not too bad. Uh, no pleats around the actual garment. So we did good there. Now comes the time to top stitch. So what I'm going to do now that all this is completed is I'm going to start at one raw edge of the back and I'm going to just turn up my quarter inch and start hemming and I'll hem then I'll come up the front and when I get up to the top of the front I'm going to continue around the neckline edge and then I'll go back down the front around here continue hemming all the way to this edge in the back so it will all be one seam that will top stitch the hem up the front around the collar and then down the other front and back to uh, the back so it will finish up all the top stitching and then because I'm going to have my little honeybee on the front that will be uh, gold and yellow I will probably use the same uh, beads for buttons on the front of the coat as I used on Jimin's yellow coat. So that's probably what I'll do. So it'll kind of help keep continuity between the two outfits, plus it will look good uh, with the little 
honeybee. So that's what we'll do to finish up this jacket. Then I'll whip up the shirt and the pants, and then uh, we'll take a look at this completed outfit. When taking a look at my pants pattern, I realized that these pants are going to have the yoke in the back. And so I thought, okay, well, we'll take a look at how to put that part together, um, just so you know how that pattern works. And um, it'll just be a little bit different than most of the pants. Um, I wasn't sure that these were the yoke back, so taking a look at that, I thought I'd fill you in. I also um, am making this pattern out of a black cotton, so I thought I'd also show the soap stone pencil that I was given and I'll show you how well it works. It is kind of amazing. So on the black, when I'm going to mark where my pleats are, I'm going to just kind of fold it here and hopefully this will show up. But it marks very nicely on black fabric. So we'll just mark those lines. Hopefully that'll show up. For me, it shows up really well, and these are kind of long pleats, so I'm going to come down here to the end where the end of those would meet, and then I'll just join the lines there. So these are a single pleated um, front rather than double pleats, and then we'll go ahead, and so when you're marking your pants or garments or whatever, Always make sure that you have the fabric turned correctly so that you're not marking just the same side of each piece. Make sure that it's always on the, the wrong side. Um, and if the fabric looks identical on both sides, just make sure one's flipped the opposite as the other, or you'll end up with a, a pleat on the inside, on, on one side of the pants, and then a pleat on the other side. <laughs> On the other side of your pants. So the left will have a pleat on the inside and the right will have a pleat on the outside. So you want to avoid that. So there we go. So we're just going to mark this line. But yeah, it marks really well. And I thought, well, that's a fun tool. So I'll lay this down here. And uh, so yeah, there we go. It shows up a little bit better. So it's a really good tool for marking on darker fabrics. So now that this is marked on the front piece for my yoke-backed pants, I have that step out of the way. We'll take a look at when I put the yoke back together. Sorry, I'm kind of bumping my camera. When I put these together, I, I suppose you could do it a couple different ways. So it's just whichever way you're most comfortable um, sewing things together. So I am going to sew the crotch seam and the back center back seam first and then I will serge that so that it has a finished edge here and then when it opens up dun, 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 like this then I will put the yoke in and to do that I simply will start at one edge and you're going to use the little V-shaped edge of the yoke and you sew down to where you are on the actual seam line of the center back and then you pivot this fabric to come on the other edge. So it's black, it's not going to show up very well. So I just wanted to show kind of that step um, how it will look. Here are the pants with the center back seam sewn and I did serge and press the uh, seam allowance towards the, when it's on the pants it'd be towards the right. So there we go. Now we'll take the yoke piece and line up this first edge. And start it into the machine. And back tack. Alright, and you notice I'm not trying to connect to this piece on this side. To me, it's just hard 
to try to match things up on a curve like that. So instead, I'm just sewing right to that seam. And I will have to check, make sure whether or not I'm on the seam. A couple more stitches to go, maybe. And we'll lift up my foot and take a peek underneath here. I'm going to adjust the light for just a moment. Okay, looks like I'm good. So now, with this still in the machine and my needle down, I'm going to pivot this yoke piece to match up the seam line on the other side so I don't have to worry about all the pins changing and make, creating any kind of a buckle. I just pull it over to the other side and continue sewing. And back tap. We'll pull it out and hopefully with this lighting and on black I'll be okay. I do need to get my little machine into the service place. And so here we go. Here is how the yoke is on the back of the pants. And so now I will go ahead and serge this seam allowance and it will be pressed up towards the yoke so that it kind of will have a little bit of like a little buckle fold, just a little bit to get both of those to lay flat. And then on the good side, I will top stitch along the edge of the yoke to hold that seam allowance up towards the yoke. And that would make the back uh, of the pants. And so that's how I do the pants that have a yoke in the back. You can um, add pockets if you'd like, and then belt loops can be added to the top when you put the waistband on. Um, I'm not going to do that on these pants. But that is how I do the yoke. The rest of the pants is uh, totally like every other pair of pants that we make. Um, they're all pretty much the same in the construction. Uh, they just have one pleat in the front versus two. So yeah, so that's the only thing that's different is this yoke. So I'll finish that up and then get these pants put together. And I did get the shirt finished. So it turned out really cute. So here's my shirt. And the sleeves were a little bit wider. So by doing that basting and then going from the outside up towards the shoulder, then any excess is right at the top of the shoulder where I wanted it. So yeah, and they have little cuffs which are put together just like on uh, on Yoongi's coat. So there we go. So the shirt's together, the coat's together. Now I'll finish up the pants. Then we can take a look at this set. Now it's time to take a look at our outfit. So we have the jacket and I do have some clips on the collar. Let's see if we can go ahead and take that off and see if it's laying down a little bit better. Uh, I had a clip just to kind of hold it in place um, because it is very stiff, the vinyl, and that wants to stand up. So there could be some little adjustments made to the collar, I guess. And there's our bumblebee and I just used a yellow ribbon for a tie because I thought oh, he needs a tie. I was going to make one and I have a pattern for one, but I was kind of at the end of the project on this one. And so I thought, no, we'll just throw a ribbon on there and tie it like a tie. Then we have the pants all done and we'll go ahead and swing around to take a look at the pleat in those sleeves. So here again, it's a, a very thick fabric and, uh, there we go, but that's how the pleat looks in the back. Then he's kind of got everything pulled a little bit here. Let's go ahead and adjust that a little bit. There we go, that's a little better. It was kind of pulled from when I was trying to refund the sleeves to get the sleeves pulled down through, the sleeves of the shirt pulled down through the sleeves of the jacket. But here we have the inset pleat and the tail that opens on the back. And then another pleated sleeve here. So that's the jacket. So I'll go ahead and remove the jacket and then we'll take a look at the shirt. So I was going to go ahead and take the jacket all the way off, but it was so hard to get it on and get the sleeves all pulled all the way down here to the cuffs that I thought, okay, we'll just open it up and take a look. So the shirt is just a button up shirt, uh, very simple and uh, the ribbon to make a little 
necktie so that's very simple and then we'll swing around the back here and of course we do have the stand so that's kind of a little bit of a hindrance but let's see I just don't want him to tip over let's adjust some lighting and take a look and hopefully the yoke shows up on the back of the pants there we go so that's the back of the pants there and uh yeah so that is our next outfit that was the green outfit and see as you can tell as I kind of pulled on that the colors wanting to stand up again so I'll probably put the clips on and let them sit for a few days just to kind of bend that color down to where I want it and uh, yeah so there is the outfit in green for V and our next outfit will be blue for RM so stay tuned bye